Hi there my crafty friends. Today's art journal page that I'm sharing with you is my absolute favourite. I enjoyed creating this so much. It was inspired by the very talented Martina Stoicheva. I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing that 100% correctly but I will pop her name in the description of my video below. I have this huge pile of scraps and offcuts that I'm going to be using to create the texture for the page. I'm going to adhere everything with Mod Podge. You could also use craft glue or gel medium. If you're new to my channel, you will soon find out that I absolutely love texture. And I think this is why I love this project so much because I absolutely love building different layers and creating all different effects and textures. Before I started sticking everything down, I did put two layers of gesso on my art journal pages. That's just to prime them and waterproof them. I'm just going to work through the pile of scraps and just build the different elements on each of the pages. I don't really have any rhyme or reason of where I'm putting the items. It's sort of where I just feel it fits and I try to balance between the left and the right pages. I'm not going to cover every inch of both pages it's going to be more um, just here and there there's going to be just elements of texture and then some plain areas too you could do i suppose every inch of every page but then i think it might just be too much because as you'll see near the end it's quite thick and quite bulky with all the different layers that we add This is really a great way to upcycle or recycle items. These are items, some of them, that I would have probably just thrown in the bin. Some of the items are just like the back cardboard of an embellishment that I bought or these little strips of fabric that are off cuts from some other project that might have just gone in the bin. But now I'm using them in the project so they are being used and um, not wasted. This is here a piece of embroidered lace. So I've just cut it in two and I'm putting it on both sides just so it can balance out. I do, I do try to balance out both sides and try and make them even so they're not sort of left heavy or right heavy. There's even there the tag, the top tag part of um, another packaging piece of item. This is just an embellishment that I had. So I'm just ripping that up um, sort of anything really goes and it doesn't really matter what you're putting, it's the texture it's creating. tile and you can actually pull it apart and just use the fibers and it sort of just works really really well you can cover things it's it leaves a texture but it doesn't actually cover anything solidly so I've used it quite a bit in some areas I've just actually pulled the threads off and just glued the fibers down Thank you. 
this is tissue paper that I'm using here and I've used this technique before quite a bit when I place the tissue paper down I actually just push it with the paintbrush um, roughly and scrumple it up so it doesn't leave a smooth area so it's sort of bubbly and rippled this that I'm putting down now is actually a die cut of a word. I've put it upside down and backwards. I just want the curly little bits from it. I don't actually want to be able to read what it says because it doesn't suit the page. I just want the curly elements. A good way to collect all these little pieces, I just have a little container to the right of my workspace. So when I'm snipping and cutting during projects, I just tend to pop all the little leftovers into that container and then after about a couple of weeks I'll just go through it and anything that's really tiny that can't be used I will throw out but if it's something I could use in a project like this then I can keep that um, in a separate area so instead of throwing everything directly into the bin it's good just to keep it and then go through it to see if you could reuse it. I'm going to be adding a photo. It's of my three children on the beach. I thought it suited um, the final look of the R page. So I'm going to be adding that. And then I thought I will also add the initials of each of my children. I've got an N, a T, and an R. The only letters that I had where I had all three the same of the, each letter I needed were these glitter ones. So I'm just going to use them, but you'll see that I will cover them with gesso later. Once all the Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to add some texture paste through the stencil. I'm also adding some grit paste, just with a palette knife, just randomly here and there. I will list all the items that I use in the description below. Once all the pastes are dry, I'm going to cover everything with gesso. The dark blue letters and the flower that I've put, I'm going to put a few layers because I don't want the blue shining through. I want them totally white.
although I want the dark blue elements covered, I am leaving some of the vintagey color shining through because my photo is of a beach theme it sort of has like a beach sandy color so i'm leaving some of that to shine through here i'm just adding a few little additional elements that i found for adding the color i'm using acrylic paints that i'm watering down slightly and i'm using blues and turquoises as this matches my theme I add the color straight onto an area and then I spray with some water. I then put quite a bit of water on my paintbrush and just let it flow through. And I believe this is some form of magic because I just love to watch as the color flows through all the different textures and some, some of it will seep in to the deeper areas, some will stay on the top, you get light and dark. It's quite uneven, but I really, really, really love the way this looks. My background is finished and I want to add the photo so I'm just going to decorate this frame just to go around. It's something simple, I don't want it too busy to detract from the background. I'm only going to add this grit paste, it's by Tim Holtz and I'm just going to put it on with the palette knife. I want it quite rough and I want the edges uneven. It has a little bit of a concrete type of feel and I like that rough look. This is all I'm going to do to the frame. Hot glue will work best to adhere this to the project because of the bulky background. I think another glue wouldn't work really well. So I'm just sticking those two down and we're nearly done. I'm just adding a little tab with the date. It was 2020, it was January of this year that we were on our holiday. And I'm just going to document that just handwritten on a little piece of the sand colored paper. I'm just going to lift the project up closer to the camera just to show you the detail of the texture, if you can see. Like I said in the beginning, this was my absolute most favorite page to create. I loved every minute of it. You can just see all the different elements and you can see the grit paste around the frame I think that worked out really well it came out beautiful I'm so so happy with this I do hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it I'd like to thank you very much for watching I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell to get notifications when my new videos come out I will see you again soon bye